Hi, my name is Charles, and today I'm going to be listening to Church's third studio album, Love is Dead, which came out in 2018. I recently listened to the most recent album that they released, Screen Violence. Um, if you haven't seen that video, go look at that video, I guess. But um, yeah, I thought to myself, I really like the sound of Church's, especially the lead singer. She is amazing. And I was really like, I think I should like go back through their discography since they only have four albums so far, and I've already heard one, so... I was like, why not just listen to the other three? So here I am now. Lauren has one of those special voices that just makes me so happy. It fills me with such pure euphoria. It's kind of the same way I feel when I listen to Florence from Florence and the Machine Sing. When I hear her sing, I just feel so full of life, and Lauren really gives me that same feeling as well. This album is called Love is Dead, though, so I don't really know what I'm getting myself into. Is this going to be a very sad album? Um... I shall see. I shall see. Screen Violence was a mix of happiness and sadness for me anyway, so hopefully that's the case with this album too, because I don't want an album that's so dark, because I don't think I'm in the mood for that at the moment. Anyways, let's get into the album now with the first track, which is called Graffiti. Sounds like we're going to start this upbeat. Oh, this is actually a sad song. The Skies is a happy one with the production. Okay. My hair is so messy right now. Just be aware it's going to be changing the way it looks throughout this video because I'm going to be messing with it. But when it comes to the song, yes, when it comes to the song Graffiti, I really like it. It's a very nice opening song for the album and it really sets the foundation for me to tell me that this album is about a relationship and how this relationship that she's mentioning was something that she was very fond of, something that like the person that she's talking about she really liked but of course like it ended it faded and you know she just looks back on it and it's like that was a good relationship but it's over now and there's nothing i can do but i can see that we could have gone further in life but we just didn't and it's sad but i still cherish this thought it's a very nice song it's a very nice song and a very as i said good way to open the album up okay the next song of the album is called get out okay that's not good. Okay. Out of here. Production, wow. Don't want to do that. Okay, so that was Get Out, and from this song, I could feel that Lauren was like, what is going on here? What is going on? Because I don't know what I'm supposed to be getting from you, the other person in the relationship that she's talking about. Because, you know, the song is called Get Out, so I guess she's like saying get out to the person because she's like, this is too hard. I don't understand what you want from me. She talks about, you know, never getting the things that she wants, but getting the things that she needs. And I mean... Yes, it's important that you get the things that you need, but if you're not getting the things that you want, then that's not good either, especially in a relationship. But she says in the song that the person is like a kaleidoscope. And for a second, I was like, what does that mean? But then I was like, a kaleidoscope has a lot of like refractions in it, and you see a lot of colors, and you don't really see one thing. So it really adds to the thought that the song to me is about like, her being confused by the other person in the relationship because she doesn't know what they want or what they're trying to give to her. Lauren said, get out of here. She said, get out. I don't. She said, Jojo, get out right now. Mm. She said, it's the end of you and me, baby. Let's move on to the next song, which is called Deliverance. God, I love synth albums and synth songs in general. Ooh, they just give me life.
Okay, so that was Deliverance, and this was an interesting song for me because, first of all, I was like, what does Deliverance mean? And when I looked up the word Deliverance, it was talking about being saved or rescued or set free by someone. And when putting that into mind and listening to like the lyrics of the song again in my mind, I was like, hmm. So we're talking about two people in a relationship and how one of them is basically setting the other free. I guess with like experience and what they have to say because in the second verse, um, Lauren says, um, trust me when I tell you about my own convictions, made my mind up long ago, trust me when I tell you it's a contradiction, wishing that I didn't know, trust me that I struggle with all your destruction, screaming that I told you so, trust me when I talk about the delusion, building up and letting go. So maybe the song is talking about like two people in a relationship and one's more experienced than the other and the more experienced person is trying to help the person who's not as experienced in life like learn things and you know they're trying to help set them free and save them but you know sometimes that doesn't happen something like that right mm, but then the chorus she says um is it deliverance if you can never never change is it deliverance if you hurt me in exchange so maybe she's saying that you can't like rescue me or set me free or something like that with these things you're telling me so hmm hmm interesting okay let's move on to the next song which is called my enemy featuring matt Berninger. Is that how you say his name? I'm sorry if I screwed it up. I think he was on the last album. When I said the last album, I mean like Screen Violence. I'm pretty sure he was featured on Screen Violence too. But anyway, yeah, he's on this song too, and let's see what they're given. Not the emptiness. My enemy. Okay, so that was my enemy, and from what I could get from this song, I feel like, well, this whole album I'm pretty sure is about a relationship, so we gotta keep that running theme, but this song in particular feels like both sides of the relationship are talking about how this relationship ended because of things we both did and that, you know, nothing's gonna change it now. What's done is done. There's an emptiness because of like what we've done to each other. And you know, there's no real point fighting because as I said, it's done. Like the damage is done. And they're both like, yeah, you could basically be my enemy now because of what you put me through in this relationship. They are both like, you used up so much on my time. And uh, that's what I don't like about relationships because if they don't work out, you just look back and you're just like, wow, I spent so much of my time with that person. And it's like, now it's kind of a waste. And uh, look at me, I've not been in a relationship and yet I feel sad just thinking about that crazy crazy okay move on to the next song which is called forever oh i feel like we're continuing from the last song now Okay, so that was forever, and whoo, whoo, Lauren said, you know, I hate you, bitch. And especially after the last song, My Enemy, it seems like forever comes really naturally after Enemy, because Enemy, there was a lot of resentment and kind of like melancholy feelings toward like each other, the two people in the relationship, but with forever, she's like, you know what, I just hate you. And whoo, my God. The feelings that Lauren was exhibiting in the song, relatable, relatable. In the bridge when she says something like, um, uh, what should I say? Should I say that I'm too much for you? And ooh, that hit me in the heart because I don't know, sometimes you feel that maybe you're too much and that could drive someone away, but 
you know, at the end of the day, that's just you. And if the other person can't get with that, then it's their problem, which is why Lauren said, you know, I hate you forever and ever. <laughs> My favorite song on the album so far. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I don't know. Something about forever just really, really hits me in my heart and gets me in my feelings and I love the production of it so it really is my favorite song on the album so far but we're about halfway through so let's just get onto the next track already okay so the next song on the album is called never say die Okay, so that was Never Say Die, and from what I was getting from the song, Lauren was saying that the person that she was in the relationship with, like, was starting to give up hope on things. Like, he promised, like, certain things were going to happen in this relationship, but then, you know, they didn't happen. And, you know, Never Say Die, I googled it, and it said that that phrase means really to don't give up. So I guess Lauren is just saying, you know, just because things aren't going the way that you plan doesn't mean you should give up, we should keep going. And you know, at the end of the day, the song is more of a hopeful one, one that she's like, you just can't give up. That's the end of the story. You just can't give up. Even if things aren't going your way, you just can't give up. And that's nice, but throughout this album so far, it seems like this relationship did not go anywhere. I don't know if we're talking about one singular relationship throughout this whole album, but so far, it did not seem like it went that way of not giving up, girl. The next song is called Miracle. I feel like I'm falling, but I'm trying to fly. The lyrics so far are... For... That drop. Mm. Uh -uh. Okay, so that was Miracle, and wow. What a song. What a song. I love the lyrics of the song. I love the production of the song. And there's a lot going on in the song in general. I don't know. At the end of the day, there's just a lot going on in the song Miracle. And I like the song a lot. It's one of my favorite songs of the album. But I think I need to listen to it a little bit more to really say anything on it. Because as I said, I think there's a lot really going on with what Lauren is trying to communicate with the song. So... I don't really have anything much to say other than I think the song's great, but I'm not gonna really comment on what it's trying to say because I feel like there's a lot it's trying to say. Anyways, let's move on to Graves. What was that? Why? Okay, so that was Graves, and ooh, spicy. We get in something that's not about, like, a romance. It's about some political things. I feel like with the song, basically, Lauren and the whole group in general are trying to say, look, people are looking away from the serious issues. And, you know, they're just looking away, and, you know, people will be dancing on graves because nothing was done to, like, address the serious issues at hand. And... I'm just like, go off, y'all. Because at the start, I was like, where are we going? But then as I kept listening to the lyrics, I was like, wait a second. I think I got what the song's trying to say. I really love the production of this song. But once again, the production of, like, some of their songs really, like, hypnotizes me and makes me not realize what they're really trying to say in their songs. So I have to really, like, either listen to the lyrics hard while I'm listening to the song or after I finish listening to the song, like, read the lyrics on their own. So, once again, great song this is, but... Ah. My god, I cannot believe that for like, I think half of it, I was like, where are we going? And then like, on the other half, I was like, wait a second. This is serious, y'all. Okay, the next song is Heaven Hell and more like religious iconography, hmm? Dang, this song is long. It's like five minutes long. The T. Okay, so that was Heaven Hell, and my god, that outro was very long. I mean, I really don't think this song needs to be five minutes long, but it's whatever. I feel like this song has something to do with, like, the age we're living in, because, you know, in the chorus, they say, um, is this heaven or hell? Through a silver screen, you're saying 
what you mean, but I can't tell. So I feel like Lauren's basically being like, you know, in this age of like using social media and like phones and all that, like it's kind of hard to really discern what's real or not. And it's kind of like a heaven or hell situation because it could be very good or very bad, but she doesn't know. In the fourth verse, when she says, um, is it all right if I save myself and if I clean up my own mess? Is it enough yet? Is it enough? Um, is it enough yet? Because I've had enough. And huh, maybe the song is talking about her being famous, which kind of makes me think about screen violence because that album was really all about like, oh, I don't want to know if I want to do this anymore. And this song makes me think, hmm, maybe she's really talking about how this whole fame thing is starting to get on her and she doesn't know what's real or not. And you know, maybe she just wants to like fix herself and then just move on because it might not be the best thing for her. And maybe that is correct because after this album we have screen violence and you know how screen violence turned out. The next song is God's Plan and my god, y'all really are going deep, going heavy with like the religious iconography, the imagery with this album. Who's singing? What is God's plan? Why does this song feel like it's this person's song featuring Lauren? Is this one of the other members in the band? Because if so, then okay. Oh, that's how we end the song. Okay, so that was God's plan and what a song, what a song. Um, at first I was like, who is singing? And then I looked it up and it is one of the other group members in the group. So, okay, that makes sense why there's no featured on this song. But it just threw me off because I'm so used to hearing Lauren being the person singing when it comes to churches that hearing this other guy's voice like threw me off really. But I guess this song in general is about like demanding someone's love because like the song legit opens up with him saying you belong with me and I think he's basically saying you belong with me in every sense of the way and I don't know why it's called God's plan but Okay, is he trying to say that it's God's plan that the two of them are supposed to be together? Because if so, that's a very bold statement to be making, man. Anyways, let's move on to the next song, which is called Really Gone. And are you, are you really gone? I'm trying my best to lift you up, to repair. You're doing too much for this person, girl. Okay, vocals. Okay, so that was really gone and <laughs> baby girl said I gotta go. I gotta go, I can't stay. And honestly, if that's what's right for you, then do it. Okay, so the next song is called I I, so maybe that means two in Roman numerals. I don't know, but we'll see. It's a very short song, it's one minute long, so what's gonna happen? What is happening? Are we going somewhere dark for the next song? That's what this is leading me to believe. Well, it seems like this leads into the next song, which is Wonderland, so I'm just gonna continue then. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it does, like, lead right into the song, the last song. How are we gonna close this album out? The Storm. No, you can't, girl. Okay, so that was Wonderland, and for me, I really felt that this song was trying to address something about mm, not being able to escape like a feeling or something like that, because Lauren's talking about how her head's in the clouds, but also her heart's in the clouds as well, and how she... something about like not being able to chase the weather if your feet are firmly planted on the ground. So I feel like this song really has something to do with like trying to do things but being stuck in your own head, something like that. That kind of reminds me of like my OCD I have because when like I'm fixated on something I can't really think about anything else even if I wanted to. Like 
I collect movies like the movies behind me, and if there's something wrong with them, like like there's a dent on like the artwork sleeve or the slipcover, my mind cannot stop thinking about that at all, even when I have other things to think about. So maybe that's what this song is talking about. Maybe I don't know if like Lauren or anyone else in the band has like OCD, but maybe that's what this song is about, you know, because I know when my OCD flares up and I can't think of anything else. It's hard for me to like switch into something else because my mind's just so set on what I'm thinking about. But yeah, Wonderland, it's a great song. And I think it's a really nice way to close out this album. I really do think that it was a nice change of pace from like this album mostly talking about relationships and then like around like the last of the album, it shifted away from that into something else entirely. So I feel like this album really gave you a little bit of everything. Okay, and with that, we finally reached the end of this album, and I gotta say, I really was surprised that this album was mostly about a romance. I mean, the album is called Love is Dead, but in Screen Violence, I felt like that one, even though it was mostly about talking about um, Lauren's experience with fame, that there were some other topics they went on to, but with this album, it was mostly about a relationship, but like Screen Violence, they kind of touched on some other issues too, as you should in an album. But yeah, Love is Dead, not what I expected, but I'm very happy with what I got. Man, if I listened to this album when it came out in 2018, my spring of 2018 would have been very different because this album would have colored it in a completely different light than how my spring of 2018 was painted because, you know, music really does affect my mood and energy and I feel like this album really would have added something nice to my energy in 2018. So what were my favorite songs in this album? Well, I have Graffiti, I have Get Out, um, what else? I have My Enemy, Forever, Miracle, Graves, and Wonderland. So for me, I have eight songs out of the 13. Well, I guess it would be more like 12 because the song preceding Wonderland is really with Wonderland. So I'm going to say eight out of like the 12 songs I like. The other four, they were fine. They weren't bad, but they just didn't really stick with me all the way to the end of the album. So I couldn't include them in my favorites list, but yeah. 8 out of 12-13. That's pretty good. Well, that's two albums down by Churches, so we'll see how the last two albums go, but I'm halfway done with their discography, and so far they have not disappointed. I like both Love is Dead and Screen Violence, but if I had to choose so far, I would have to say Screen Violence is better than Love is Dead, even though Love is Dead is more, like, cohesive sonically. I really do like the experimentation that they do on Screen Violence, so that's why I pick Screen Violence over Love is Dead because even though it's not as cohesive as Love is Dead is, I just feel like Screen Violence just is more experimental and it just tackles like topics of fame like harder than they're tackling topics of relationship in this album. So Screen Violence is my favorite of their albums so far, but as I said, I still have two more albums to listen to from them. So. Who knows what my favorite album of theirs would be once I finish all this. Anyways, tell me down below in the comments what you guys thought about this album. Do you still listen to it now to this day? I mean, at this point it's three years old, but you know, a good album no matter what time period it came out will always stick with you. So let me know. Let me know if this is one of your favorite albums of theirs because as I said, there's only four albums from them. So it's either one of your favorites or you like it a lot or you don't. And I would have to say I like it a lot, even though there are four songs on the album that I'm like, eh, about. Like, overall, I would listen to this album over again. Anyways, you guys, thank you for coming to my channel and watching this whole video. And yeah, I'll see you guys around in the next one if you're around for that. So until then, I'm going to go now. So yes, bye.